Hallelujah, that God gives us to speak into our own lives as it relates to the Spirit of God. Amen. Whew. The Lord is good, and he is worthy to be praised. As we gather today in the sanctuary to give God all the honor and all the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy, right? He's worthy. He's worthy. He sent his only begotten son to save us. Think of the condition that you were in when God came and rescued you. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. He saved our lives. Hallelujah. And even saving our lives again and again on today as saved individuals, right? He's still saving us from stuff. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Welcome to the temple on this morning when we all know that life is a temple experience. You don't get any other experience than you can get at the temple. Amen. Hallelujah. Of joy and worship and praise. But with that being said, we always open our services up with prayer. So we're going to invite Reverend Teresa Webb to lead us to the throne of grace. We ask that you will pray with her and for her as she comes. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let us pray. Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I pray that you fill this place. Fill the atmosphere, Lord. Fill up our homes, Father God. Fill up our hearts. Fill up our minds, Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, I want to thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way, clothing our right mind. And oh, Father God, I want to thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your grace and your mercy that is renewed each and every day. As we look over this world today, Father God, there is so much going on. But God, we want to thank you because you kept us, Lord Father. We had the wind and the rain, but we still woke up with covering and shelter over our heads, Father God, as we see others that have no home, that have nowhere to go, don't have no food, Father, from the devastation that's going on around this world, Lord Father. So we thank you so much for all that you have done thus far. We all pressed our way here for some reason. 
We don't know what it is, Father God, but you know what it is. We can't tell everybody, as I always say. But God, as we come here today, let us hear from a word or a song or someone just giving us words of encouragement. Hallelujah. And we pray, Lord Father God, those that could not make it here, Lord Father, we pray that you go to the home and give them what they need at this particular time. They might need a healing, Lord Father. They might need a touch. They might need a phone call. They might need some groceries. Who knows what they need? But have us as your beacon to do what we are called to do. And as I heard a young man pray, preach yesterday, he said, Lord Father God, we need to keep our cups filled because we never know when we are needed. So Lord Father, as I pray today, oh, hallelujah, let us fill our cups with Bible study, learning your word. Let us fill our cups up with love. Let us fill our cups up with respect. Let us fill our cups, Father God, because when you show up, we want to be ready when you get here. So you can say, well done, my faithful servant, by us keeping our cups filled so we can pour into others. God, you have your way, Lord. And as we go through this time, Lord Father, we also pray for our leaders. They have so many decisions to make, God. Touch each and every one's heart and mind, Lord Father God. And let this world all over the place get what we need. And my heart is speaking out peace right now. Let it be peace in our homes and peace in our houses and peace at the job and peace at the school and peace over all in the wars, Lord Father God. Where so many people are captive and can't be set free. But to allow us to come into church this morning and lift up praises and lift up glory to magnify you, Lord, and adore you, Lord Father. Because we know in some countries they can't do what we're doing today. So, Lord, let us praise you. Let us love you for what you did on the cross 2,000 years ago. If it had not been for you on our side, oh, my, 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 where would we be? Where would we be? So, Lord, Father, bless the sick who are in the sick rooms. Bless those who are homeless, Lord, Father, God. Bless those who are incarcerated, Lord. Bless us right now, Lord, Father God. Bless us in your own mighty way. And I thank you right now, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, Father God, as I'm praying, let, us, let me pray for the, your pastor, the shepherd of this house, who's going to bring forth the word. Oh, touch him from his head to his nose with a fresh anointing, Lord, Father. Touch his clay lips, Lord Father. Let the words of his mouth flow out like living waters. So someone be made whole, healed, and set free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the opportunity to pray. Amen. For the Lord said, if you ask anything in my name, I will hear you and I will answer you. Hallelujah. Next, <laughs> we're going to have some praise and worship. Amen. You ready to go a little higher in the Lord with song of praise? Oh, come on, evangelists. Take us just a little bit higher in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God some glory this morning. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. We just came to lift him up on this morning because he's a great God who does great things. Amen. In spite of what we go through, we want to call on him, knowing that he will fix it for us. Amen. There's a power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's healing in the name of Jesus. And we came to bless him on this morning. Amen. Can I get you to lift your hands and just worship him? Can you just glorify him this morning? Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Whoa.
much power in your name. Jesus. 
Anybody ever experienced that power? Oh, my Lord. And see, we always thinking about the power of Jesus when we need something. It's even when we're actually doing good, we still need to call on the name of Jesus. Because it is power in the name of Jesus to keep us in the right direction. Amen. Don't you love him today? Oh, come on. Do you love Jesus today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love him because he first loved me. Amen. And then ask me for a thing in return. Amen. 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 We're blessing God in here on this morning. Hallelujah. And I thank God for your presence. But right now, we're going to call up the pastor of this church. Amen. And I pray that you will receive him as he come. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, give God some praise in here, man. I'm tired too, but like David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. See, can't nobody do it for you but you. Come on, somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise this morning. Come on, the sun is shining. The sky is blue. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice and be glad, man. Man, I'm so tired, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I came home. I had to eat yesterday uh, when we got up, trying to check out of the hotel, trying to get to the church. And, you know, they had breakfast for you, but I was not able to eat it. Amen. Because it was 9 o'clock already. And uh, the young man was preaching. Amen. About that fire. Amen. And I certainly wanted to hear that, amen. And so we went through a whole service, an ordination service, and we hadn't eaten anything. Sitting up there eating peppermints and <laughs> trying to satisfy the flesh. I wish I had a witness. And so I got home, ate, went right to sleep, amen. And I didn't wake up till around 9 o'clock, man. I said, man, let me just look over my, my sermon for tomorrow, man. And so... Stayed up to about 12, amen, and then sinus was bothering me, man. I, it's that sinus season, amen, that pollen in the air, man. I don't, all of a sudden, it hit me as soon as I got home, man. So, amen, we started to kind of take some stuff, amen, some Buconex, amen, and finally decided, let me, let me just do a nebulizer treatment because the stuff was dripping so fast, I could hear it wheezing in my chest. <laughs> so, so just put the nebulizer on it. <laughs> Amen. And so that I have enough strength to do what I need to do. Amen. And so we were able to get a little sleep last night after we tossed and turned. But we're here today. Amen. To, to give God praise. Man, then we had a wonderful spring meeting, didn't we? How many of y'all experienced it? Amen. Hallelujah. It was a wonderful meeting. Amen. A two-day meeting. Amen. Uh, you know, not as many workshops as we normally have, but, but the one workshop was good that talked about systems that need to be in place, amen. And I looked at our church, man, we need some systems bad. I said, Lord, have mercy, she's talking about us, amen. <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. Folk come in, amen. We, we see them, amen. We don't follow up, man. We don't know where they at, amen. People get baptized, visitors come, man. We don't know what happened to them the next week for the next week. Glory to God, some systems need to be put in place, amen. <laughs> And glory to God, amen. And the pastor can't do it all, amen. <laughs> glory to God. See how quiet y'all got right there? Hey, hey. Somebody got to help, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. And got to make sure we put the right people, amen, doing the follow-up. Can I get a witness? Amen. So we're going to look at that, amen, and see what we can do, man, to better our church, amen, systematically, amen, so that uh, we can follow up, man, and folks, man, coming to visit us and, and that kind of thing. 
uh, some other things they, they talked about too, but, but, but it was a good meeting. It was a good meeting, amen. A lot of good preaching, amen. Amen. And so we thank God for what he did on the last two days at spring meeting. All of, and thank you so much, amen. We, we came round, amen. I wanted to do like my, I wanted to do like my former presiding elder, amen. Uh, when he got thought about it afterwards, amen. Everybody was reporting 100%, say amen. But I wanted to say round, <laughs> like the right, right Reverend Belcher would do, amen. Hallelujah, glory. But I'm gonna do that next time, amen. We annual conference is right around the corner, amen. And so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that from you, Doc, and, uh, and uh, that's what we're going to be saying next time, amen, round, amen. We had quite a few churches round, and we were one of them. Thank you all so much, amen, for making it happen, amen, amen. Y'all y'all did a little over $9,000, man, in, 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 in less than like a month and a half, amen, and, and you all are to be commended, amen, and, and pat yourself on the back. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And so we got that out of the way. Amen. Now we can take care of home. Can I get a witness? Amen. Some things we want to do. Amen. Certainly we're going to do that. Amen. As we begin to do ministry around here. Amen. We're headed toward Pentecost. Amen. That's uh, May 19th. Uh, we're still in Easter tide. Amen. And we're headed toward Pentecost. Amen. You'll see white up here all the way to Pentecost. Amen. Do, do anybody know what color it turns when Pentecost hits? Yeah, amen. That's that stewardess over there. I heard you. <laughs> stewardess says, if nobody don't know, you ought to know. <laughs> amen. And so uh, we're headed toward Pentecost. Amen. Uh, and that's the day that 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 the Holy Spirit came. Jesus said, I got to go. Amen. But I ain't going to leave you comfortless. Amen. I'm going to send the comforter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's who's with us now. Amen. That's who got you up this morning. I, that's who helps you. Amen. Uh, Holy Spirit, he walks with me. He talks with me. He reminds me that I am his own. Amen. So we thank God for the Holy Spirit. That's also the day. Amen. Remember in January where you sowed first fruits. Amen. Well, 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 Pentecost is harvest time. Amen. You're looking to reap a harvest. Amen. That's an opportunity. Amen. If you sow, amen, you can reap, amen, a harvest. If you've been praying for some things, amen, Pentecost is the day it's supposed to happen. Can I get a witness? Amen. So we look forward to that. Amen. Uh, next Sunday is our officers day, uh, April 21st. Amen. That's a 10 a.m. service. I will be the preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're asking all of our officers to do $200 and $50 for everybody else. Amen. So that we can put some money so we can begin to do some things we need to do around here. Uh, we, uh, man, band drivers are just consistently needed. We want to create a ministry that picks up some folk on Sunday. Amen. We drove the van to uh, Hartford, didn't we? Yeah, was it a good ride? A good ride, amen. The tires were good. The bump wasn't too bad, amen. Seats were comfortable, amen. Come on, give God some praise for hallelujah, the van, amen, hallelujah. Don't forget, Women of Russell meet every third Saturday at 9 a.m. in person. That's everything. That's coming up, isn't it? That's this Saturday. You did this month already. All right, so starting in May. All right, starting in May, amen, hallelujah, glory to God, amen, every third Saturday at 9 a.m. right here at the church, amen. Also, Faith on the Yard, this is a young adult session via Zoom, that's April 16th, that's this week at 8 p.m., and they're going to investigate the challenges of the absence of young adults. Amen. That link, make sure that link goes out to our church. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, the absence of young adults is called faith on the yard. Amen. Amen. You want, they're going to they're gonna investigate the absence of young people in our church. Don't forget, save the dates, New York, New England District. That's June 7th and June 8th in Syracuse. And then the annual conference is, of course, uh, July 10th through the 12th in Rochester, all right? Also, uh, Nellie B. King scholarships are, are, are available, amen. Uh, applications, amen, are available, amen. So uh, do we have anybody graduating this year? Nobody? Who? Oh, Mia York is graduating this year from high school? 
All right, amen. We want to make sure she gets an application, all right? We want to make sure she gets an application for the Nellie B. King Scholarship. They give one to each district. Uh, uh, so the New York, New England district, all right, the uh, Philadelphia district, and the Washington, Virginia East gets an award, amen, for the Nellie B. King Scholarship. Also, the Thomas, uh, J.C. Thomas Scholarship, amen, application deadline is May 30th. Uh, that the Nellie B. Uh, King scholarship deadline is June 8th. Uh, and so May 30th, I want to get this out to all seniors graduating, all right? Uh, don't forget Seventh Praise every Thursday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, see the link on the screen. We'll make sure that goes out every every uh, week. In fact, it does go out every week. Uh, don't forget church school, amen. Church school, y'all, church school every Tuesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And then Wednesday is Bible study at 12 noon and 7 p.m. All right, Seven, 12 noon and 7 p.m. Bible study. All right, we're studying what? First Samuel, amen, the book of First Samuel. What chapter are we in? Eight, that's right, we're in chapter eight, amen, chapter eight. So uh, we'll do a review if you come on. <laughs> we'll catch you up, amen, somebody. All right, tithes and offerings can be sent via Cash App. That's dollar sign R-T-C-M-E-E, R-T-C-M-E-555, dollar sign R-T-C-M-E-555. And we will continue to go live every uh, Sunday at 10 a.m. via YouTube and Facebook. And don't forget to like and share the word. If you got any shout-outs, any references that you want to reference, amen, don't forget to send it to rtmediaministry at gmail.com. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. We're going to continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. It's offering time in the temple. Yeah, amen. We're going to lift our offering. Amen. We're going to give as unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord loves what kind of giver? Yes, amen. If you got to do it begrudgingly, amen, keep it. He doesn't need it. Amen. He ain't broke. Hallelujah, glory to God. We thank him for the opportunity to be able to give back a portion of that really which belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Amen. We're going to continue to sacrifice. Amen. That little $5 sacrificial offering all the way up until Pentecost. Amen. So get that out. Amen. Hallelujah. As we continue to sacrifice. Amen. It's good to see who, all of you all this morning. Amen. Sister B, it's good to see you. I know you had surgery. You got another one tomorrow. Is that right? Amen. She had cataract surgery on one eye. She's getting the other eye. She'll be able to see real good after a while. <laughs> Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. So certainly the Lord wants to use you. Hallelujah. In a powerful way. Amen. He's given you gifts and graces and Hallelujah. He wants to get that back. Somebody say amen. amen. Didn't that man preach yesterday, amen, about the talents, amen, that God has given you talents, amen. And very rarely he said, do he give you five talents, amen. We don't see many five talent folks, amen, nor three talent people, amen. Most of us is on the level of one talent, amen. And now don't you go digging no hole and burying your talent. That's glory to God. Hallelujah. That was a powerful sermon on yesterday. Amen. Get your gifts out. Amen. Whatever you're going to give to the Lord. Amen. The cash app, of course, is dollar sign RTCME555. Bow your heads with me, if you would. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Bless us now as we prepare to give that really which belongs to you. You have provided for us. You have made ways for us out of no way. So we thank you for it, oh God. Bless those who have a desire but no means like only you can. In Jesus' name, somebody who love him shout amen. Ushers, you're in charge. Here you go. <laughs>
Father, we thank you for the gifts that have been given. Bless now, return to some 30, 60, even 100 fold like only you can. In Jesus' name, somebody who loves him, shout amen. amen. God for gifts. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're coming to up the side of the mountain. We're getting ready to reach the top. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have Evangelist Simone come back just one more time. And after that, the next voice you will hear is that of our pastor. Amen. Amen. I ask that you will get your hearts and your minds ready to receive so that the word of God can dwell in you richly. Amen? Amen. Come on, evangelist. Praise the Lord. He's worthy of it all. He's so worthy. And we glorify him. Hallelujah. All our praise. We bless his name. the Lord on this morning and thank him hallelujah for the things that he has done hallelujah Jesus we glorify your name For he has done great things where we are glad. And we came to magnify him this morning. Can you just open up your mouths and worship him? Can you glorify him? Hallelujah. Thank you for delivering you. Hallelujah. We bless you. Day and night, night and day, night and since
How many know he's worthy? You know, when I just think about what he's done for us, soul looks back in wonder. I realized this morning that if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, wouldn't be here. Glory to his name. Just encourage your neighbor. Just tell him he's worthy. Yeah, he's worthy. Before I forget, the women want to meet briefly after church next Sunday. All right, just briefly. Okay, before I forget, because they'll be looking at me after service all crazy. But, but don't forget, all right? Open your Bibles right now to Genesis. We're going to go back and finish what we've been starting already. Chapter number 13 and verses 14 through 18 there. You will find our assignment for today. As we continue uh, our sermon series in the life of Abraham. Uh, tell your neighbor, it's a faith journey. Yeah, it's a faith journey. Genesis chapter number 13. We was in 12 last week. We in 13. It's a progressive uh, revelation. Chapter number 13 beginning at verse number 14 through 18. When you have it, say amen. I'm going to be brief this morning, so you got to listen. And the Lord said to Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall thy seed also be numbered arise walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it for I will give it unto thee verse 18 then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Thus ends the reading of the word of God. For we know that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Just one more time, just remind your neighbor, tell him it's a faith journey. I want you to get this, beloved, because I'm going to be brief. As I said already this morning, the walk of faith is a progressive revelation. Progressive revelation, because in this age we're living in now, Jackie, right, of instant everything. We, 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 we want to know everything right now. We can't wait for information. We can't wait to do anything. It almost kills you to be in a traffic jam. Talk back to me if you can. You, you, you can't stand waiting in the line at the grocery store. Why don't they get more cashiers out here? Everything has to be microwaved. You have to have it right now. You, 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 you can't wait for the coffee to brew. Everything is instant. Right away. You can't wait for anything. Well, I want to serve notice on you this morning. God don't care anything about your impatience. 
In fact, it does not bother God at all that you are in a hurry. Because the journey of faith is a progressive revelation. And by that I mean as we walk in obedience to what he has already revealed to you, he will show you more and more. It's almost like the more you walk, the more God talks to you. I wish I had a witness in here. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse number 10. I see I got to give you some scripture. Uh, number 10 says, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Psalms 119 and, and then verse 105 says, the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. In other words, God reveals himself only as we have the capacity to receive him. I wish I had a witness in here. Kind of what the preacher was talking about yesterday, how he gave one five and one three and one two. Amen. The one with five had the capacity to receive the five. The one with two had the capacity to receive the two. But the one with one only had the capacity to receive it. Don't be looking around whatever, what God gave everybody else. And you getting jealous about you only got one. That's all you got the capacity to receive. Talk back to me if you can. If you, you would have had more, he would have gave you more. The Bible says he giveth every man according to his own ability. Can I get a witness? I told you last week, and I believe it sincerely, that, that the Red Sea opened for the children of Israel as long as they were walking. As long as they were walking. God told Moses, use the rod in your hand, stretch it forth over the sea, all right, and the sea will part. He said, but the sea will stop part parting if they stop walking. Because God cannot do anything or he is not going to do anything for you until you move forward. Somebody ought to help me preach in here. God does not show you everything because if God showed you everything, then you wouldn't need any faith. But God said as long as you are moving forward, the sea is going to open. And when they got to the Jordan River, remember that? When the feet of the priest struck the brim of the waters, the waters parted. And they walked over on dry ground. Just like they did in the Red Sea. But at the Jordan, it was flood season and the waters would have overwhelmed them if they had to stop moving. Tell your neighbor, keep moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Yeah, keep it moving. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They got in the fiery furnace. They had no idea God was going to get them out. They had no notion of what was going to be the outcome. But faith doesn't care about outcomes. Faith just trusts God. No matter what the outcome. They said, oh, king, uh, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. Because the God we serve is able and he will deliver us out of your hands. But if not, glory to God. Somebody say, if not. <laughs> We've already made up in our minds that we're not going to bow. I wish I had a witness in here. If God delivers you out of the fire, you're going to be saved. If you die in the fire, guess what? You're still going to be saved. God will deliver us. Progressive revelation. God is taking you as far as you have the capacity to receive. 
Many of us, we, we break up the blessings in our own lives because we fail to have the capacity to glorify God. I'm tired, but I feel like preaching this morning. We trust God a little bit. We, 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 we trust God with a little money. Yeah, see how funny that is? Yeah, that hit some of y'all, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we trust God with some things. But some things we got to handle on our own. Y'all know how we are. Progressive revelation means when you know better. Yeah, y'all know. Y'all know the word. Yeah, you do better. When God shows you what to do, it's a sin not to do what already you know God has told you to do. Ah, tight but it's right. But here's what I, here's what I want, want, want to get to, and, and I'm going to be done. Verse number 14, I'm going to get out of your way. I told you I'm going to be brief this morning. I know y'all want me to stay up here all day. Yeah. <laughs> Preach till I fall down. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little something this morning, and we'll be back next week prayerfully. Can I get a witness? Here's what I want you to get to. Here's what I, verse number 14. I want you to get this. The Lord said to Abram, watch this, after he separated from Lot. This is what I want you to see. In other words, the promise came only after Abram separated from Lot, which teaches us this morning that God can only bless sorry, the separated life. That if you want God to bless you this morning, there are some people you're going to have to stay away from. There are some things that you're going to have to put out of your life in fact, the Bible said, lay aside every weight and sin that door so easily beset us. Can I get a witness? Anything that keeps you from being God's best, you need to turn it loose. Let me give you some examples. Y'all ain't able to come to prayer meeting. There's a prayer meeting every Saturday here. I think it's second and fourth Saturday here. And nobody don't show up. We get more outside people on that day than we do uh, uh, church folk. Like y'all don't need prayer. You're not able to come to prayer meeting. You're not able to go to church school. We announce it up here till we blew in the face. 7 o'clock Tuesday. Y'all know the date and time. We send you the link. Don't nobody show up but a handful of folks. I mean five. You're not able to go to church school. You're not able to get to church on time. See how quiet y'all got right there? I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. You're not able to serve God in spirit and in truth because your life is too crowded. You got too much stuff that you're involved in. You, you got to let some stuff go. Because you are neglecting your family. You're neglecting your worship. You're neglecting being all that God wants you to be. And listen, listen. God wants you to have a job. He wants you to take care of yourself. He wants you to be actively involved and socially engaged. All of that's wonderful. But Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other unimportant things, inconsequential, frivolous things, will be added unto you. Can I get a witness? Because what you put in front of God is an idol. We learned that in Bible study, didn't we? Yeah, the Israelites, Baal, and, and Aristotle, whatever his name was, her name was. Yeah, yeah, they, they worship idols. Hallelujah. Yeah, Dagon, all of them folks. 
Hallelujah. He says, I will, know, I will have no other gods before my face. And it was not until Abraham separated from Lot that God could bless him. Some stuff and some people in your life, if you're going to be blessed, got to go. Talk back to me. I just need one or two witnesses in here. I wish I had one or two more witnesses in here. If I had just left that fool, come on, sisters. Help me preach right here. If I had left him at his mama's house. Come on, brothers. If I left her where I found her at the club. Talk back to me. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separated. Let me say this to you. I've said this before. Maybe some of y'all got it and maybe some of y'all didn't and maybe, maybe you'll get it this time, right? Be comfortable in your own skin. Enjoy your own company. Go to lunch with yourself. Take yourself to the movies. Call yourself and say, self, you sure look good today. Tell yourself how good you look because nobody on the planet is a better you than you. God loved you enough to give you your own set of fingerprints. And you dishonor God when you can't stand being with yourself. You are made in the image and the likeness of God. Somebody help me preach in here this morning. But at the same token, now, because there's always a flip side. There's always a flip side. An overemphasis of that becomes sin. When you think of yourself more highly than you ought to. When you think that you're the only person on the planet. Because when it, when it comes to us being in love with God and in love with ourselves and in love with our neighbor, then, then, then you, don't, you don't have to adapt when those people walk out of your life. Abram had to adapt. When he separated from Lot. The separated life is a life to which you have to adapt. You have to get comfortable being a Christian. You can't be embarrassed being a Christian. The Bible says I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For I know that it is the power of God unto salvation. For who? To them who believes. He goes on to talk about in Psalm, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. David said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me. Have I got a witness? So I just want you to know that when you get comfortable being a Christian, you can talk like Paul. I've learned in whatsoever state I find myself therewith to be content. He said, I know how to act when I'm up, and I know how to act when I'm down. I know how to be in abundance, and I know how to act when I'm a base. In fact, he says, I can do what? All things through Christ who gives me the strength. And then looking at our text, when Abram separated from Lot, and he looked, uh, it looked like Lot had got the better hand, God said, let him think he got the better hand. He got the better hand, but you got the promise. Let him take what he wants, and when he leaves, when you get away from him, and you never should have brought him in the first place, when you separate from him, then I'm going to renew the covenant that you and I had. I'm going to renew the blessing with you. Can I get a witness? 
Am I helping anybody this morning? Watch this. When Lot is gone, God says to Abram, now here is what I want you to do. See that land over there in the north? And see that land over there in the south? And look in the east. Look behind you in the west. He says, see all that stuff? I'll give it to you if you can walk it out. You got, you got to be able to walk it out. Can I get a witness? Glory to God. Is this word for somebody this morning? Because God is very economical when it comes to words. Every word in the Bible is God breathed. It's inspired for a reason. Even the names and places in the Bibles are there to teach us about God's goodness. The Bible says Abraham set up a tent in Maim that is in Hebron, which is in Mount Hebron, and the Oak of Maim. And see the name Maim, Maim means fatness. Mm -hmm. And the name Hebron means blessings. So Abram sets up a tent in, in a fat blessing. I wish somebody would help me here. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. I just stopped by to tell you this morning that God's got enough to give me and you fat blessings. I don't know about you, but I don't want no skinny blessings. I don't want no weak, puny blessings. God's got enough to give me a fat blessing, but I got to pitch my tent in the right place. Who am I preaching to this morning? Can I get a witness? The last thing I want to say in the text, and I'm through, he pitched his tent in Maine, which is at Hebron, and there he built an altar. Abram does again that which has become his trademark, his brand, his stamp. His trademark is that everywhere he goes, he builds an altar. He's not only known for pitching tents and building altar, but his trademark is wherever he goes, he worships God. I'm through. I got to sit down because I'm tired already. What is your trademark? What is your brand? Are you known for just sitting in church and sleeping while the sermon is going on? What is your trademark? Are you known for praying the same old prayer over and over again until we can pray right along with you? What is your trademark? Are you known for being so mean that you put your purse right here and your umbrella right here and your Bible right here because you don't want nobody sitting by you. What's your trademark? Are you so ugly acting that when people see you coming, they say, oh Lord, here he comes. Here she comes. Or is your trademark worship? Because they know if they sit with you, it's gonna get noisy. Some of y'all's trademark is being quiet. But I want to thank God for those whose trademark is making noise. If you're going to get on this pew, it's going to be some racket. If you're going to sit with me, you might want to give me some space. Because after a while, he's going to start talking about Jesus and who he is and what he's done. I'm talking about Jesus. Do y'all know him? Mary's baby, the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley. Won't he do it? Won't he bless you? They say he went to a hill called Calvary. They hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head and there he died. But that's not how the story ends. How many of you know three days later? Can I get a witness? Three days later, he rose again. Won't he raise you? Won't he bless you? Won't he heal you? Won't he deliver you? If the Lord healed your body, what's your trademark? If the Lord made a way out of nowhere, what's your trademark? If the Lord 
open doors for you. Uh, what's your trademark? Won't he do it? Why don't you tell somebody? Why don't you encourage somebody? Tell them uh, I don't look like what I've been through. Uh, I don't look like the divorce. I don't look like the habits. I don't look like the financial trouble that I've been through. Uh, if you know him, why don't you bless his name? If you know him, why don't you shout hallelujah? Give him glory. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody shout in this place. Look how far the Lord has brought you. Look how good God has been to you. Look how many doors that the Lord has opened for you. Whatever you're going through, just know that this too will pass. I wish I had some believers in here. Let your enemies think that they're getting the best of you. In fact, the Bible, let your enemies think they're getting the best of you. Know what the word says. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, nor the workers of iniquity. For if you call on, if you keep your hands in his hands, for they shall soon cut off like the grass and for they shall wither like the green earth that's Bible y'all David said the Lord is my light and my salvation yeah whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid he said when the wicked I wish I had Bible readers. Even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. Just before they got to me, God clipped them. They stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. One thing, one thing, now, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. But that ain't the shout. Here it is. Here it is. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me. They see me, but they can't get to me. They know where I am, but they can't mess with me. In fact, no weapon, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Because I'm on a, I'm on a journey of faith. Because the journey is a faith journey. It's a faith journey. We walk by faith. Can I get a witness? Come on, y'all. Stand on your feet. I'm through. No, I'm through. <laughs> That's all y'all going to get today. Just tell yourself it's a faith journey. And you don't always see what's around the corner. You don't always know what's up ahead on the road but I guarantee you if you keep on walking glory to God I feel that many times I wanted to quit and give up and, and, and just throw in the towel I was through couldn't take it no more somebody came along and encouraged me they told me to keep walking McCullough it does not yet appear what you shall be keep on walking they wasn't lying either. That was about seven years ago. I kept walking. I cried first, but I kept walking. 
I ain't say you ain't gonna cry. But if you keep on, if you keep on walking, the tables are turned. God will make a way out of no way. Won't he do it? Come on, give him some praise. The doors are open. He made a way over 2,000 years ago. He went to Calvary's cross, suffered, died, and bled for you. Hung out there on a tree all by himself because he had you and me in mind. They crowned him with thorns. Amen. They pierced him, put nails in his hand and feet. And then they hung him high and stretched him wide, yeah. They thought that was it. See, they never should have lifted him up. That's where they made a mistake. They made several mistakes, but that's one of them. Because he said, and if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. That's the only reason we're here this morning. They lifted him up. But then they made another mistake. They took him down. And they laid him in a bar too. Didn't they do it? It was a bar tomb, y'all. It wasn't, he wasn't meant to be there forever. It wasn't no permanent situation. See, some of y'all think that some of the situations you find are permanent. Good God from on high. And you think God comes to kill you. No. Somebody preached a sermon a while ago about you are planted. You're not buried. That means if you're planted, just sooner or later you're going to sprout. I remember we planted some flowers and, and uh, we put seeds in the ground. Little hole, wasn't no deep hole, little hole. Put some seeds there. I mean, about six inches. It wasn't even that deep. I think it was like my finger. You can put the seed there and then cover it up. Went there first day, nothing there. Went there three days later, wasn't nothing there. A week later, guess what? And then one day, I just stopped saying, you know what, I ain't going to go keep looking. And then one day I walked by it, and it was a little sprout sticking up out of the ground. He'll raise you up because you were planted. What the enemy meant for bad, God meant it for good. Remember they threw Joseph in a pit? Yeah, I'll talk about that next Sunday. Come back for all officers day got something special for you. Can I get a witness? The doors are open. Those of you watching online, the doors are open. Jesus provided a way for us over 2,000 years ago. All you got to do is come. He says, come. He said, I'm standing there at the door and I'm knocking on your heart. And all you got to do is open it. I'll come in and I'll dine with you and I'll sup with you. He wants to bless you this morning. And if you don't know him, this is your opportunity to get to know him. Anybody looking for salvation? Anybody online looking for salvation, put your name in the trap box. We're going to follow. We promise you, we're going to put systems in place so that we can make sure we follow up. Put your name there. I guarantee you we're going to call you. Put your number there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody looking for salvation? Glory to God. How many know prayer changes you? Anybody need prayer this morning? Come on to the altar. Come on. Elder Belch, I need you this morning. I do, man. I, I, need, I know you. I know you can get a prayer through. Uh, uh, <laughs> And, and we've been praying for Miss Belcher. Amen. Come on this way. Where you going? Come on. Don't go way around there. We, we need you to take the shortcut. to this altar. Come on, come on. You might want to get a seat on behalf of someone. Amen. Let the church say amen. Oh, come on. Say amen like you mean it. Say amen knowing what all is ready has done for you. Down through the years. 
ain't came, won't nobody do you like Jesus. I'm a witness. I am a witness. I'm not just talking about what I heard, what somebody told me, but what God has done for me. And then the sweet part about it is this. God is no respective person. If he done it for you, he'll do it for somebody else. Help us, oh God, to believe today that God is real. How do you know he's real? Somebody said, I know he's real because I real, he's real in my soul. Amen. Let us bow our heads and humble our hearts. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, it's once more and again this morning that we cry out to you from the wells of our spirit, not just talking and complaining, but crying out, saying, thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, who raised me up from the sick bed to put walking in my feet, clapping in my hands, joy in my spirit, and a desire to tell somebody that God is real, and he's real in my soul. He's real because way down I know but beyond a shadow of a doubt, God does answer prayer. Father God, we're around this order today, needing and believing that you are still there and a promise of, of blessings, promise of those who cry out to you. God, you'll move the mountain. God, whatever it is they have need of, I know you're able to do it. I know, God, that when we cry out to you from the wells of our spirit, joy comes in our heart. Laughter comes with us. Peace comes with us. And then a desire to tell somebody else how good God really is. God, I know that's what you saved us to do. Not only for ourselves, but to tell somebody else how good you really are. We stand here today. We stand here today saying, by our presence how good you really are God we just praise you and thank you this morning in the name of Jesus thank you for being a prayer answering God and thank you for God for moving our situations out of our way that we couldn't do a thing about but we look when we woke up one morning and all those problems all those things that held us back you had moved them out of the way and we come to say thank you this morning thank you in the name of Jesus we pray we give you honor dear God we give you glory there are some things that we can't do a thing about but we know you as being the God who can and we truly thank you this morning Lord, bless around this altar today and all the various concerns that those who came have. We don't know, but you know all about them. Let your blessings be upon them and everybody else in this house that we can receive what we need to have in our bodies, minds, and souls this morning. But we ask it again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Now, if you believe that, say amen. I know all of us sitting here, we have a testimony. God has done something for you. Can I get a witness this morning? And you see, that's really what we should come to church about. That we get so loud that everybody walking by this building will realize there's something going on in there. Somebody is telling of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. My soul cries out, thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you. You made a way out of no way. You opened doors that the devil tried to close. But God, but God, through his grace and his mercy. Nothing but the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, can't nobody. Do you like Jesus? Can't nobody. Do you like the Lord? I know there's a witness here today. Uh, you don't have to shake to me, but let's tell God thank you. Amen. You ought to come to church. Let me say something. You ought to come here to get crazy. I heard a preacher say one Sunday morning, this ought to be the place you have an opportunity to get crazy every time on Sunday morning. Just think about a minute. Think about some of all of that, all of that hell you went through during the week. Huh? Well, the devil ain't been messing with none of y'all then. Everybody had a great week and no problem. But you see, here's the place where you can let that stuff loose. You won't need a psychiatrist. You won't need a therapist. All you need is Jesus on Sunday morning to let that stuff go. Then you can, hallelujah, catch fire like you done lost your mind. Yeah, you lost your faith. Yeah, you lost your mind for the worldly things, but you on fire with the Holy Ghost. Amen, somebody. Somebody said sometime, you got to get sick enough to know how blessed you really are. Huh? Sad to say, but that's the truth sometimes. Sometimes we come to church and we just sit there. Pastor asked you to clap. You might put a clap. Come, pro come to profile. And you know who's laughing at that? That devil in hell and all his imps. He said, I got them. Because they can't cut loose and let the world know how good God really is. That's what we're supposed to be about. It's a warfare. And we're the soldiers in the army.
I want us to, I want us to think about something right quick. Some of you may remember, or some of you may not want to remember, but you remember back in the day when you were in the Elks or the Legion or someplace else. You didn't care who was looking at you when you got up and danced or when you cut that step. You didn't care who was looking. But now we sit there now. Now we sit there like we're so high as the ditty. And we got it going on. But the devil don't want you to move. You know what happens sometimes? You may come in with some pain. When you start moving for Jesus, that pain gets out the door. The joy gets in your feet. And you forget all about the pain you had. Can I get a witness? Showed all the joy on Friday night and Saturday night. Let that joy come on Sunday morning. So somebody walking by here, I remember. I remember that. Excuse me. I remember that being true. One time we had a service going on in here, and the brother was walking by. And he had his little bottle in his hand. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all acting like you don't know, but you know what I'm talking about. He put that in his back pocket. And didn't take much to walk up those steps and come in here. Because there's something going on in here. Hey, Amen. Don't be part of that crowd talking about they ain't here. They ain't doing this. and talking about the church. No, don't do that. Call them. You know, you know what I... The Bible tells us to compel men and women to come. That's how really our jobs. You've been saved and blessed. You've been saved and blessed. Our job is to tell somebody else. And, and really feel bad when we look around and we know we haven't told in our own households. We left some people in the beds that should be here this morning. We have to get fueled every week. If you're not, as he said earlier, you're not going to Bible study and prayer. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You didn't tell me to say it, but I'm saying it. You have to understand this. This is a warfare. It's not about looking cute and being cute. Huh? I like he said in the sermon, I don't want certain folk to sit beside. No. We are that catalyst that God wants to use to bring souls to Christ. Let me say it again. We are the catalyst that God wants to use us to bring others to Christ. You're here. They want others to come. All we have to do is get to busy and get to work. Amen? Amen. I know some folks say that. Some folks say, that Negro is crazy. I am. Freddie's not here, so I'll tell the truth today. 78 years crazy for Jesus. And I'm not tired yet. You might be tired of me, but I ain't tired yet. Because I know what is done for me. You got your own testimony. Amen. Let us bow our heads and get ready to be dismissed. The pastor told me.
All right. All right. And before we do that, are there any guests in the house? If there is, please stand so we can greet you. Amen. 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 Do we, do we customarily give the mic to the individual so you can tell who we are? We don't do that? Okay. Uh, can, you, can you use your manly voice and tell us who you are? So they, they have all... Does, every, does someone here have all of your information where we can get back in touch with you? Do you have it? Okay. I, I'm, on behalf of the pastor and this wonderful body of Christ, we greet you, my brother. We thank God for you this morning. We pray that something was said to encourage your spirit, that not only would you come back, but if you're not a part of another household, you'll come and be a part of this one. God bless you, sir. God bless you. All right. Is there somebody else? That's it? All right, let's bow our heads. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we've come now thanking you, God, for all that was done here in your name today. And realizing because you are God, you are God, and there's no other like you. Father, we cry out to you from the wells of our spirit, saying, Lord, have mercy upon us. And mercy because we know, Father God, there's some work that we can do that we need the power of the Holy Ghost to help us to do it. Breathe upon us that we'll catch fire, burn for Jesus like never before. And others coming by will be caught by our flame and become a part of this great household of faith. Thank you for the man of God who gave, gave us the word of which you will dwell in his spirit today that we might realize, God, even the more with us, saith the Lord. Bless us down from this place, dear Father. Keep us in your care. For we ask it in the mighty and the matchless and know the name. But Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.